Hello, booktube. Well, it's that melancholy moment. <laughs> it's the last mail haul of the week. And at least uh, the mail haul's going out with a bang, because it's a small mail haul. It's only two packages, but they're both big, heavy boxes. So this is going to be, these are going to be finished copies, I'm sure, and probably finished copies of things that are coming right up. Uh, so it'll mean that regardless of what these things are, whether I like them or not, they are immediate engagements. I won't, they won't be the many, many books that I get. I, I log them, I note them, maybe I, I page through them a bit to see, give, give a book a chance to hook me so that I can't put it down. Those books I don't want to miss and I don't want to wait on them. But, you know, the huge bulk of them, I get them, I log them, I note them, I show them to you and talk about them with you uh, so that you can put them on your list if there's something that interests you. And then I put them in the other room on my work shelf and I don't get to them for a while. As you've seen on this channel, I usually wait for the arrival of a finished copy to sort of kick me to go back and re-examine that book because a finished copy means that it's it's hovering on the horizon. It's, it's about ready to, to need my attention. Uh, and that's what these two will probably be. Unless they're huge advance copies. Because both these boxes are heavy. Of course, huge advance copies can't be ruled out. As we've seen, we're starting to get September and October and even a couple of November books. And October and November are the season for big, gigantic books. They're, they're, that's the season for my own favorite genre, biographies. And also for major histories of all kinds, stuff like that. Publishing The publishing industry holds to the 100-year-old idea that all of us leave our jobs for the summer. <laughs> and and it's, it's an imprint they actually got from... Uh, even older than that, from the book trade in London 200, 250 years ago, where anyone who had means and a country house did leave London during the summer. And so you gear up for the real book season, the real book sales in the fall. It's a silly, atavistic thing. Nobody leaves anymore. Be, Americans especially are lucky if they get any vacation time. They certainly don't pack up the house and head for the place at the Hamptons. <laughs> Most of them don't. Maybe we're getting to the point where the only Americans who can freely afford new books are the ones who can also afford to do that. Uh, but one way or another, uh, either way, either these two boxes are uh, finished copies of big, heavy books that I'm going to want to pay attention to right away, or they're advanced copies of big, heavy books that are going to interest me anyway. Uh, so let's see what these... We've only got two of them to go through. We'll see what these two are. And Bean is on the ready. <laughs> there we go. All right, so... Oh, okay. Uh, well, this is something we've seen on this channel before. This is a paperback. Uh, it comes out uh, in June. I guess maybe, maybe this is a finished copy. I kind of thought that what I got originally was a finished copy. Uh, this is this is something that we've seen already. This is Stalingrad by Vasily Grossman. Big, gigantic new book from the New York Review of Books. Uh, translated by Robert and Elizabeth Chandler, and this is the very its very first English language translation. And that's a major literary event. This is the author of Life and Fate, a truly great Russian novel, a Russian novel that deserves to stand with all the other great Russian novels, you know, whether it's, it's older things like Crime and Punishment or War and Peace, or newer things like Quiet Flows of Dawn, uh, uh, Dr. Zhivago. Uh, Life and Fate is amazing, and this is this is a companion volume to that, and it's it's the dream come true of anybody who's ever read a book like Life and Fate and really loved it, and wished that just magically there were another book just like it by the same author. That almost never happens. Uh, let's see here. Vasily Grossman's Life and Fate is widely considered one of the greatest novels of the 20th century. However, the book is only the second half of a two-part work. Now, in its first ever English translation, comes Life and Fate's predecessor, Stalingrad. During World War II, Grossman worked as a war correspondent for the Russian newspaper Red Star. His articles were widely read, not only in the Soviet Union, but also in the West. Present during the Battle of Stalingrad, the author gained a singular perspective into the horrors of combat and the depth of human determination, cruelty, and feeling. Only a few years into peacetime, Grossman managed to channel his experience and imagination into a fictional work of astonishing ambition and power. One that would stretch over 15 years and contend with forces of Soviet suppression and censorship, and that was nearly lost. Whereas uh, state officials completely pre prevented the publication of Life and Fate in the Soviet Union, a, co a copiously edited version of Stalingrad was released in 1952, 
under the name For a Just Cause. Ti uh, the title that, that uh, the pub sheet tells me that title is roughly equivalent to the book's title in Russian. Uh, in this form, the book was censored to speak about subject matters like Stalinist purges and the Holocaust, and it came nowhere close to matching the author's original vision. And this translation does. This is the first unexpurgated, complete, and accurate translation of Stalingrad. Uh, and it was, it was taken from Grossman's unpublished typescripts uh, by the two translators, who have produced a brand new version of For a Just Cause under its intended title, Stalingrad, adding in uh, lost material and restoring the, book, uh, the work uh, strength and vitality profoundly subdued in the initial publication. So this is basically the first time that this book has ever appeared. Uh, and it comes out from the folks at the New York Review of Book Press in, you know, a green paperback brick. This is not, this is not a paperback because it's an advanced copy. This is what it's going to be like. Uh, I'm trying to see now if, this, if the pub sheet gives me an idea of the price. Probably $30. Yes, twenty-seven ninety-five for a paperback, uh, but in this in this rare instance, worth it. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, Stalingrad. I'm hoping, hoping, fingers crossed, to write about it for as big an audience as I can find. We shall see. It's a tough sell for a book section and editor, uh, but I I have open letters if if you know I'll have open letters to review if I don't do that. So another one of these, baby. Yeah. Oh, you can't have the no, you can't have the packing material. You can have the cardboard. No. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, okay. This is this is just a, a mistake. That's all. Uh, this is an, another copy of Stalingrad. <laughs> I must be on their list. That's great because they've got a couple of books coming out in the fall that I very much want to see. Uh, but it's just a second copy of Stalingrad. So that's. That's a little bit anticlimactic for our final book haul of the week. Is it's it's a great book. I have read it since uh, since I received it, first received it and showed it on this channel. I have read it. I intend to read it again. Uh, now I didn't think I would be getting a second copy, but this is this works just the same. It's there's still the same kick in the pants for me to go at it again. This time with many many dog-eared pages, many many pencil annotations. On the chance that somebody will let me review this, I will, I want to be able to command it. I also want to be able to command it because it's tremendously good. There are huge passages in here that are every bit as memorable and wrenching as the huge passages in Life and Fate. Uh, so kudos to the translators. So, you know, it's positive and negative <laughs> for this last mail haul of the week. It's, it's two copies of the same great book. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's, to say the least, it lacks the variety of our usual mail halls, but <laughs> I'm happy to have it anyway. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I'm very pleased. I am going to use this as an opportunity to uh, to reread Stalingrad. There is the bean. <laughs> she is wandering around. She's been wandering around all day, not knowing what to do. <laughs> Sometimes she's been sleeping. Sometimes she's been pouncing on me. <laughs> Sometimes she's been pouncing on other things. <laughs> I think she's a little restless. <laughs> I think she probably wants to go for a long walk. And I can oblige. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap this up. But I'll be back. We have plenty of other bookish things to talk about. Thank you, BookTube.